Hi. Um, well, uh, because I, I work in the hospital and I see a lot of problems, social problems and things like that, I think it's very important that people have security in a home. Because if people don't have to keep moving about, then it brings up stress, they get depression, obesity because they don't have enough money so they eat fast food, things like that. So that actually put a lot of pressure on the NHS and especially around in Harlow. Harlow's ha they have built a lot of houses in Harlow, the population has grown, but the hospital hasn't. That's what they need to think. You know, if people have security, their health will be better. I don't often disagree with Frank, but uh, I do disagree with him on the point about him sitting pretty with, as a house owner. Uh, I mean, you might have paid your mortgage, you know, but as far as I'm concerned, the most secure form of housing was and should be in the future council housing. Because it's the one only type of housing I know where you don't have to worry about whatever happens here, you'll always be housed, whether you fall ill, lose your job, or what have you, you, you've still got a home and you're looked after by the, by the public sector. <coughs> well, of course, we've got to remember it was the formation of the Labour movement back at the end of the 1800s, into the 1900s, that, uh, that developed the Labour movement to, to develop the council house projects. It was to provide decent houses for working class people and a rent they could afford. And that's something which is I, I, I remember saying in this room once before, when I was teaching, I would let adolescents on what was needed for uh, every living thing. <coughs> and one of the things all living things need is shelter. Right? And it's a basic right. We've got to have shelter to survive. And we're one of the few species that cannot provide shelter for, uh, for our own, uh, all our own time. I mean, the, the fact is that you have homeless. The fact is that you have, it's like our housing has become a, a commodity, a vast one, where they're making enormous profits out of our basic need. And of course, it's nothing to joke about or, or encourage. As far as I'm concerned, the worst thing that happened was when Thatcher started selling off the council houses, and Labour's got to repair them. They've got to build the council houses. And it's not a question of saying, if we can afford it, or what have you. Of course, as, as Jim said, there is the money there if, 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 for determination. And what we're going to do is take it up. I think it's the Tories recognise the Labour Party is the party of the trade unions in this country. And we've got to make sure that that Labour Party knows that the trade unions want these things to be done. It wants its members to be housed. It wants members to have jobs. And as far as I'm concerned, council housing for all is the basic right of our movement. And it's got to be one of our clarion calls. And I'm sure it will sweep Labour back into power uh, in no time at all. Basically, what I was going to say has been said by the other yeah. comrades. There's only one point I'd like to make the reference to multi occupancy. I think it's important that we don't get sucked into a racist argument. The racists will use that. You know, uh, their, their common statement is Pakistan is, you know, loads of them living in single occupancy building or whatever. The answer to that is quite simple it's economic. If you look at the history of multi occupancy, with uh, new immigrant populations, they'll, they'll live in poor housing, multi occupancy, because they need to spread the cost of the housing. It's an economic problem, it's not one of race. That's the only other thing. Can I, I'd just like to um, um, propose some action really from, from this meeting. Um, I mean, I'd like to perhaps suggest you know, that um, a couple of weeks ago there was a, a really very successful day of action over the NHS, you know, involving the Trades Council, um, local parties, etc. I'd like to suggest that we repeat that for defend council housing, you know, calling for a mass programme of council house building, something like that, um, defence of traveller communities, uh, maybe two weeks' time, something yeah. in the town centre. Mm -hmm. just like to yeah. On the doorstep on a regular basis, uh, the apathy in the town for council tenants amazes me because we're, we have a massive problem, we have a fragmented society, we're all about the, by the right to buy, which a conservative government as a method of killing off council housing. They just, when they were in power, they had never had a plan for the repairs of houses, they wouldn't tackle it, so the easy way out was sell it off cheap and we all rushed in the majority to buy these buckets. But who saw, who foresaw what has happened to the society today? We really are fragmented, fragmented and divided because People who bought their cows and houses, or a section of them, sold them off, and then the unscrupulous landlords 
come in there. And the first thing they do is petition the rooms to make a two-bedroom to a four-bedroom. And this, these houses were built for what? The accommodation of two, three, four, whatever. But this has created a rabbit hut situation in some of the properties. And we can see it every day around the town. I may, I may sound racist, but I'm not. What happens is the people in there, a normal worker can't afford the rents that they're charging twice. I know from, a, from perhaps a, a £350 a month rent, they're charging £700, £800, £900 a month. And it takes families to keep it. So there's mixed occupancy in there to pay, for, pay these rents. And this with the rubbish and other things that they accumulate, with the, with the amount of people in there, and nobody knows, they're not fixed tenants. They're, there's faces going in and out at different times, so how they're controlled, the only thing I know is, the only control is on safety. They've got fire doors and smoke alarms and things like that. But, but there's a, a feeling in the town that's disgruntled over the way it's gone. And the only way to change this situation is to change the government and get back to what's been spoken about earlier. That nationalising, that we have the railways and land, and, and so we can get back on track. We'll never get it back as it was. We were a town with a close knit community, all moving on a similar level. There was areas with private accommodation, house owners, who were accepted in a nice balanced way. But today, the town's gone down the pan, and they keep telling us how nice it is, but on the doorstep, yeah, I'd like to finish on that note of apathy. We need to sort of get some literature out there to make people aware how, how bad it is and what we can do is have the right government in there and unite and we'll not be divided and we'll move on. Thank you. In a situation when, uh, to deal with it as a generalisation, um, I absolutely agree with the, the comments that have been made uh, about the rights of, uh, of tenants. The idea of um, uh, um, limited tenancies and um, having regard to people's income, it, it really is a, an absolute disgrace that, that, that it should even be con considered. Uh, that that's, uh, that's the case. If people pre prefer, it, first of all, of course, uh, the economic thing that many people um, can only afford to, to rent council houses and they still deserve to have a decent quality of, uh, of housing and shelter, uh, and if, if that's uh, what they can afford, they, they, uh, that's um, what they should have. But even if they can do better than that, but they prefer. Uh, not to have the burden of, 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 of ownership, because there are problems with, with, with house ownership as well, uh, then um, uh, they should ha have an absolute right to, uh, uh, to do that. But getting to the specific local issue, of course, uh, as Conway there has, uh, has said, it's a national uh, program of house building that's the key to it. Without that, whatever uh, um, else we can do is, is very, very limited. And I'm, I am a former councillor, uh, and quite frankly, I, I wouldn't be uh, very happy to be a, a councillor at the present time trying to do the best for, for people with the, all the constraints. So I have great sympathy for, for Bob, and um, uh, Norman is hoping to be a councillor, um, uh, next time, and um, uh, De uh, Dennis and, and Rob, the council, they have my sympathy in the problems they've got to, to, to face. Um, and you've got to also look at the, um, the people who are in, in my situation, who do uh, uh, ha have their own, their own homes, and say, I'm sitting pretty, but a lot of them don't actually recognise that. What's actually happened? With the um, huge increase in the um, price of housing, what, what that has actually meant a transfer of wealth from the people who rent houses to the people who own them. It's, it's true, of course, uh, that simply a, a nominal value of a house that you, you own uh, may not make much difference from day to day, but in the, the long run, if you pass it on to your children, for example, 
then it, it's actually a, a, a change in the, the balance of, um, uh, of the whole economy. And, uh, but you, most people probably don't really, who are in that situation, probably don't recognize it. They may be struggling on day-to-day -day things, but the fact that they own a house uh, is something that's absolutely um, a fundamental part of their uh, their share in in the in the community. And if they are uh, sitting pretty, they, they you've got to, still got to convince them in order to get into power, in order to do anything, whether at national or local level. So there are uh, some very wide issues that you need to address, as well as the what you might call the principal and to some extent emotional issues of, uh, of the rights and um, duties of, uh, of uh, council tenants and the, the need for more council housing. Okay.